2020 presidential hopefuls will face their biggest test of this election cycle in just four days, Super Tuesday, when delegates from 14 states, including Massachusetts, will be awarded to candidates. The Republican primary ballot in Massachusetts will include former Governor Bill Weld, who's challenging President Donald Trump for the party's nomination, and eight names will be on the Democratic ballot. Tonight, we take a closer look at the two candidates pushing hard to win here, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. For the past week, a UMass Lowell poll had the two neck and neck in this state among likely Democratic primary voters. Now, a poll from WBUR and Mass Inc. has Sanders ahead of Warren, 25 percent to 17 percent. Many of the candidates have crisscrossed the country, making the case for why they're the best pick for the Oval Office. At this hour, Sanders is holding a rally in Springfield at the Mass Mutual Center. State Representative Lindsay Sabadosa of Northampton is also co-chair of the Sanders campaign here. When she joined me in the studio earlier today, I asked why she wanted the role. I decided that I was going to endorse Senator Sanders for a variety of reasons, mostly because our political philosophies are very, very much aligned. And when you decide that you're going to help a candidate, you really want to go all in. And so if I can use my, my voice and my position to help the senator, that feels appropriate. Mm. Uh, Senator Sanders is in Springfield tonight, yes. a rally at the Mass Mutual Center. Uh, it's ahead of Super Tuesday. A lot of other states, California, Texas, jump to mind that have far more delegates on the board to offer uh, Senator Sanders. Why? Massachusetts and Western Massachusetts in particular. So let me tell you, as a Sanders co-chair, we get to see what his schedule is. We get a daily preview of where he's going to be, and he is going to be in all of those states. His schedule is absolutely terrifying. Um, so he's coming to Western Massachusetts. I actually forget where he is flying in from, but he's doing another rally this morning, and he will be here in Western Massachusetts. And we're just so thrilled that he's uh, decided to come here. I think Massachusetts uh, is in play for the senator. According to the latest polls, he is polling ahead of all the other candidates candidates, which is very exciting for all of us. And if you look back at 2016, he, he won a lot of support in Western Massachusetts. So this is really a great place for him to sort of come home to and to kick off his Massachusetts tour. He'll be here tonight. He'll be in Boston tomorrow, and then he'll be back off to South Carolina. And um, we're just very grateful that he's spending a few hours with us. You alluded to polling, mentioned polling. He and Senator Warren had been neck and neck for a bit over the past week. And then the most recent poll that came out overnight did show Senator Sanders ahead 25 percent to 17 percent. Um, Senator Warren and Senator Sanders have a lot of the same campaign platforms and very similar in many regards, but uh, Senator Warren made some differences, pointed out some differences at the debate this week, pointed to Medicare for All, and said that she felt like she would be able to get the consensus needed to move her plan forward and raised concerns that Senator Sanders would not be able to do that. What do you think about that position? Well, with enormous respect to Senator Warren, I just don't think that's true. Senator Sanders has been working on Medicare for All for 30 years. He is the father of this bill. He's really the father of the movement in a lot of ways in the United States. And I think that he has done the work. If you look at Congress right now and the new Progressive Caucus that's in the House of Representatives and the number of people who have signed on to this bill and then the way that snowballed into state legislatures. I myself am one of the co-chairs of the Massachusetts Medicare for All Caucus. It's the first caucus of its kind in the country. Those movements are growing and building and Medicare for All is a word that is now known to everybody. I think that if you, you know, maybe people can't define it fully, but they've certainly heard of it and they have an idea of what it is. And that's thanks to Senator Sanders and his work. So he really has been building the movement. He's been building the coalition, and I think that he is more than capable of getting it done. But what about the reality in the Senate, where Senator Mitch McConnell has already said he has no intention of letting this go anywhere? Well, we don't know what the Senate's going to look like um, come 20, you know, the election night in 2020, so I think a lot remains to be seen. And, you know, part of being a president is laying that groundwork, built, getting people on board. Medicare for all, you know, the, as a buzzword, sometimes can feel a little bit polarizing to people, but when you actually talk about what it means and break down how it's about cost containment and health care, a lot of times even very conservative voters start to think this does not sound like a terrible idea. And so I do think there is a lot of room for us to move in that direction. But is there more of a challenge on that here in Massachusetts, given that more people than ever are now on the state-sponsored health care? 
Well, it is true Massachusetts has near universal health care. However, you have to think, what does that really mean? I can have health insurance coverage, but that doesn't mean that I can actually afford to access health care. So a lot of times we're seeing people get on these plans that have $10,000 deductibles. So yes, they have health care, but do they have $10,000 in their bank that if a catastrophic event occurred, they could go to the hospital and get the coverage that they need? A lot of times, no. I think the average bank account right now, savings account rather, has about $400, and uh, it, that's that's, that's generous, quite frankly. Um, so, you know, people have health care, but they can't access it. And that's why Medicare for All is so attractive. And if you look at the poll numbers across the state, uh, there is a lot of support. And moves on to a different issue, education. Senator Sanders would like to make uh, tuition free for public colleges and universities. A, use, a recent report of UMass Lowell, though, uh, excuse me, UMass Boston, found that Latinos earn less than non-Latinos regardless of educational background. Mm -hmm. So how do you make the case for get this education free or not if there's that disparity exists? Well, that disparity comes from so many other things. I think that it's fundamental that people, if they want to be able to go to college because that is part of the career process, they want that they be able to do so and free college education will allow that but those disparities oftentimes stem from early childhood which is why when Senator Sanders proposes free early hood child free ch early childhood education it's vital because that's those first steps that start to level the playing field for every ir everybody irrespective of race and economic background and so we can't just look towards college to be the great equalizer it can't be we've already gone way past the point of needing to take action so we we need to look at the early childhood education too, which is why his plan really spans from birth to, to death when it comes to education. A recent New York Times report this week raised some concerns among the Democratic Party officials who said that they would might work to stop a Sanders nomination. And the report went on to say, quote, there's overwhelming opposition to handing the Vermont senator the nomination if he arrived with the most delegates but fell short of a majority. If majority isn't reached, should the nomination be given to the person with the most delegates? So I, I really, when you were reading that, the word handed to struck out a lot for me because we're talking about voters and what voters are saying. So if Senator Sanders goes into primary and caucus after primary and caucus and wins the most number of votes, I don't see why he should not be given the nomination. The person with the most number of votes should be given the nomination because that's what the American people are saying they want. What to do then about the current DNC rules which say you need that majority? Well, I'm very confident that he's going to get to the um, convention with the actual number of delegates. So I'm not concerned about that quite yet. But I I do think that it's a dangerous precedent for the party to be setting. You know, right now we're talking about Senator Sanders, but we could be talking about any candidate. And I don't think anyone wants to hear, you've won the most number of votes, but you're going to get to the convention and we're just going to decide that somebody else gets that. that that's very dangerous for the party as a whole. Legalized uh, marijuana at the federal level is something yes. else that Senator Sanders supports. You're a state legislator here in Massachusetts. You've watched the rollout happen here. One of the things that uh, you may have seen are the challenges that Massachusetts mm -hmm. has faced. Do you think that how could what happened here in Massachusetts impact what's happened at the federal level or inform it? Well, I think that we can inform it, and that's one of the things Massachusetts has been really good at. We've been very good at passing laws and then watching them kind of spread to the rest of the country and to the federal level. We did that with uh, with health care, for example, which then sort of turned into the ACA. So I don't see why we couldn't do the same thing with legalized marijuana. And Massachusetts is not alone in this. Other states have started to legalize marijuana, so it makes sense for that to spread across the country. And when you look at mass incarceration rates in the United States, it really does make sense for us to start uh, implementing some some common sense drug policy on the federal level. Mm. You may have been hearing, maybe hearing from local communities that recycling is becoming a real problem where China used to pay local communities to take away that recycling. It's now very likely that contracts uh, held at the local level will actually need to pay to have that recycling yes. removed. Local level grappling with this. State hasn't yet stepped in. Do you think that this should even transcend and be something that federal can federal uh, government should be weighing in on? I do think that there are things that we should be doing on the federal level and actually there are some great pieces of legislation on the state level as well around manufacturer responsibility that we could be enacting. There's going to really need to be a push towards increased environmentalism and of course Senator Sanders, a huge supporter of the Green New Deal, generating jobs that are focused on the environment. What could combine more perfectly than our recycling crisis and that legislation?